What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to High Q Season 2, Episode 4. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. Thank you for supporting me and the Asian community from my last video where we talked about the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes. I'm a firm believer in using my platform for good and also that change happens when everyday people make the right decisions. Thanks for explaining what Townsperson B means. It seems like Haikyuu is filled with a bunch of Townsperson Bs and yet they each have their own character development which makes everyone feel like an important part of the story. This whole time I thought Yachi was the same height as Hinata, no wonder she looks so tiny under the net. Many people don't know how much club advisors and coaches do just so that kids have a good experience and just a team to play for. I've been coaching high school volleyball for over 15 years and we only get paid two to three thousand dollars for being a head coach, which breaks down to less than three dollars per hour for the amount of time we spend planning for practices, organizing schedules, running practices, coaching games and tournaments, ordering and organizing jerseys and gear, and so on. This doesn't even include all the volunteer coaching staff that we have. So make sure that you appreciate your coaches and advisors because they do a lot more than you think. At the end of the day, they don't have to coach you and without them, you wouldn't have a team. The people who think like Hinata, who are extremely competitive, is very rare, at least at the high school level. Most people join sports teams for social reasons, and others do it because it's a hobby. Then you have those rare players who are extremely passionate about the sport and want to win all the time, which are honestly the best athletes to have. The hardest thing to do is to teach an athlete how to be competitive. You can definitely tell who's competitive by the way they react to losses, even after practice games or drills. If you've been enjoying my videos, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so you never miss a video. high Q reaction. It's a very well illustrated tower. Sky tree! <laughs> Maybe that's the the landmark for Nekoma. Oh, I think they're just excited to go to Tokyo. So everything seems amazing. Oh no! Hinata Kageyama. <laughs> They're gonna form a fusion. Is that passing? Oh no, don't tell me that Hinata and Kageyama can't make it because of that last test. Oh, Kitsugi actually looks concerned. <laughs> Even Yachi is disappointed. Oh, but Tokyo is a series of games. Oh, that means they have to take some additional exams and hopefully be able to attend Tokyo. Oh, here we go. Shimizu. <laughs> Tanaka's twin cannot handle the beauty. And now Shimizu is protecting Yachi from these creepers. 
Tora, okay. Gotta remember his name. <laughs> so bright. <laughs> uh, I love these exaggerated creeper moments. So I don't know if they're doing a practice match or if they're actually in Tokyo. The center ace. That means there must be a middle blocker who's going to be an ace on a team. Supplementary exam. Maybe that means a catch-up exam? To try to pass and get some extra points? Oh, that means they can still make it! Thank goodness. <laughs> Failure, boys. Oh, she's the cool one. Providing the, the hookup. That's good. So glad that they can still make it. Man, she's driving a little crazy there. Crazy person drives like a crazy maniac. <laughs> I love Tanaka's intermission and explanation. It would be cool to see how much the Karasuno team has grown when they scrimmage them again. Oh, this is the group practice, that's right, not Tokyo. The invite only. And they have to maintain a good relationship with this group so they can keep coming back every year. Man, I'm excited. Lots of competition. Oh, Kenma's looking for his friend. Awesome, this is like a round robin. Talking about how much extra time coaches spend on trying to make sure their teams are as good as they can be. At least where I'm from, during the summers, those are the unofficial practice times. So actually majority of the teams take the summer off, but coaches who are honestly a little bit more dedicated to their team will spend the summers training and is unpaid, at least for most of the coaches I know and definitely at the schools that I've coached at. So we organize a summer league where teams from the surrounding areas get together and we play time scrimmages. So maybe 20 minutes, take a five minute break, and then they rotate. And in one single day or evening, we end up playing four or five different teams, which is really great. And a lot of these teams are not in your conference, so you get a different experience. And we call these jamborees. I don't know what they call it where you're from, but I would love to know, so let me know in the comments below. These are super fun because they don't count for a score. So you can try any combination and really test out certain players and try different plays because if it doesn't work, that's okay. You're not going to lose or win any games because this is all practice and this is the best time to do any type of experimentation. But also a great opportunity for your team to get more experience. Shinzen. Furokudami. Gotta practice some names because we got too many names to remember in this in Haikyuu. Oh, captains talking to each other. Driving. Yeah, we use that for our team for punishment too. Oh, that's right. This is from the OVA. I'm glad I watched that first because we got to meet this character with the cat eyes. Lev, I think that's the name. I, I'm surprised I actually remember his name. Oh, I, I hate being late to games. So I totally understand not this anxiety to just want to get there. <laughs> She's got cat eyes too. Hi. 
And then he saw the little giant. How does she know? Maybe that's what Tanaka always talked about, so she knows what these volleyball junkies do. Ah, so Kuru. <laughs> All the bald guys. Yeah. Uh, even though she was a badass in her school, she still had to wear a school uniform, but she's got a loose tie. Huh. Little giant, even the little giant got subbed out. Oh. <laughs> What are you looking at? Remember how I talked about those rare athletes that are extremely competitive naturally? The worst thing you can say to those people when they lose is that it's only a game. And this is something that I wish society would change their minds about. Sports is more than just a hobby. I'm not saying that you can't have it just as a hobby because that's perfectly fine if you want to play volleyball for fun. But the true benefit of participating in a sport or an extracurricular activity is it's a life-giving force in your life. Beyond just staying in shape and keeping you active and being social and having fun, it teaches you so many life lessons. And honestly, I think this competitive desire goes all the way back to when we were cavemen and women. We were born with these natural instincts to want to compete, right? Compete for territory, fight to protect your family, defend them against animals that would kill you. And nowadays we don't have that need because we've evolved as a society, but there are still those natural born competitors and warriors that are very in tune with those instincts. And sports is a great way to really embrace that part of themselves. But I totally get where Little Giant is coming from. Sometimes I would be difficult to talk to after I lose because I would be so engrossed in the loss and frustrated, punching the wall. And I've learned how to manage that a little bit better as I've gotten older, but that core burning fiery competitive drive is still there. Yes, very intense. That's what people usually say about me is I'm very intense or too intense. Yeah, like, like an aura. <laughs> Yes. Great competitors inspire those around them to compete. Ah, she was secretly admiring him from afar. <laughs> That's truth. That's why I like Ushiwaka. Just speaking truth. Man, even Tanaka's sister has got some character development. No one gets forgotten in Haikyuu. Finally, we get to talk about some volleyball technique. So Nishinoya is doing a great job of getting his body behind the ball. You won't always have time to do this, especially when the ball is traveling a little faster at a higher level. But the intent of still trying to get your hips behind the ball will maximize your control. So ideally we want both feet, but you see how the ball might be moving a little too fast for him. So he can at least move one foot so that he can position his hips and body behind the ball. The reason why this is important is because if your body is behind the ball, then regardless of where it hits you, it's at least going to go forward and up, which is the best error possible because that's generally where the setter is going to be. If you have a habit of always reaching for the ball and not getting your body behind it, then you have a small target to try to contact it from. And if you don't contact the ball well, it's just going to go all over the place or you're not even going to pass it at all. Nice, I've already seen it! Gotta practice my high Q. Ooh, he got blocked. I just had to pause it because the look on the person who blocked him 
because the facial expression of the person who blocked him is uncanny. He just has a, a little little smug look. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'll probably get more irritated at that facial expression than if someone yelled across the net at me. Ooh. Fukurudani. Damn, they lost by a lot. Oh, here we go. You gotta leave a bitter taste in your mouth after you lose to motivate you to work even harder. Oh, who's this one? Asahi's twin? Tarako! <laughs> that was like a snap. That's like what my mom says. She's like, that's gonna break your arms. Yeah, who's this guy? Got another ponytail with some bigger lips. Is this guy's name? Ubugawa. Ah, so one of the top serving teams. I want to go back and take a look at his jump serve. I thought I heard five steps. Toss. One, two, three, four. Okay, no, still four steps. Sabu. Oh, triple threat offense. They probably known for running a super fast offense. Oh, that was a great pick. Yes, it's hard to if you don't know volleyball, it's hard to keep track of why are all these people are jumping. Ah, combinations. Seems like every team has a bald guy on their team. Is that a requirement for playing Japanese high school volleyball? Is every team has to have some Tanaka? And I'm also looking at this guy in the bottom right corner. He's got the, the what we used to call back in the day called the fob cut. I know this because I used to have these haircuts or the bowl cut where my mom would just put a bowl on my head and just cut it straight across and people definitely knew that uh, your family was not from the USA. Shinzen, purple. Too many names. Destin Rivals, is that Nikoma? So maybe their strength is transitions. That means digging the ball and then converting it. Oh, there we go. I want to see Ushiwaka play. Oh, that was definitely more. <laughs> Tsuki, Tsuki got hit in the face. Just waiting for someone to laugh at Tsuki. Oh, this guy's got crazy hair. Damn, is he gonna charge up and go Super Saiyan? Fukurodani. So they are one of the strongest teams to look out for. That was such a great intro. Oh, Tsuki blocked it with his hand. If you ever find yourself to participate in a jamboree or a scrimmage where the score doesn't count, this is such a rare opportunity to test your limits. A lot of times, especially for high school athletes, when they're playing a new team, they tend to get self-conscious and they're more concerned about looking good or their reputation of what people think about them versus testing their abilities. Now, what do I mean by testing their abilities? Take advantage of the fact that the score does not count. And usually a coach is not gonna sub you for poor performance, maybe poor attitude and poor work ethic, but there's really no reason to sub a player out because you're not trying to win games. So if I'm working on my jump serve, it doesn't matter if I miss like three or four. If I know I'm trying to get my jump serve better, this is the best time to test it in a game situation so that when season does come around and the score does count, I've made all the mistakes and grown from that so that I can actually hit a good jump serve in the games. Oftentimes, our concern for what other people think of us or how we appear in front of people gets in the way of our own progress. So especially if you're in high school, 
you just got to let go of what people think about you. And the reality is no one ever really cares about how you appear as much as you think. So that's my advice for taking advantage of these jamborees, especially when you got very high level teams. You should get excited about those opportunities and not get intimidated by them. Ooh, did they arrive? Oh, they lost again. Aha, uh -huh, just sort of mediocre. I would save those punishments for the end, because you do want to save your energy for the games. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> oh, she's probably just nervous about them wanting to make it to the scrimmage. Ooh. Oh, that's why they've been struggling, because they're missing the best center and their quick attack. Aha, uh -huh. they're going to give him a fresh boost. Oh, just in time to play Nakoma. Perfect. It looks like Hinata and Kageyama are warmed up. So this is the second best player next to Ushiwaka, if I'm correct. Ah, oh, now they try to hit the bottle off of a quick. <laughs> this is how you know Kageyama has changed. When Hinata didn't hit the bottle, Kageyama immediately looks at his hands and probably thinking, based on his facial expression, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better to help Hinata hit that water bottle? It's fascinating that even the intermission evolves with the characters. Nice! Nice to receive it! Oh, here we go. That's right, the quick set. Damn, this guy's got some funky hair too. Oh, now they got experience. Kageyama's serve. Now the quick transition from Hinata. Can't stop the speed because he runs half the anime. Oh, soft block. <laughs> That's usually Tsuki who says those type of comments. Oh, they won. Don't worry, Coach Ukai will feed you afterward. Let's see what he's thinking about here. Yeah, even good teams will adapt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How is Hinata going to evolve? He needs to change direction and stop hitting blindly. Oh, Lev. Oh. He's got the extra tall reach, and they already figured out how to do that in the OVA episode. <laughs> Looks like a cattail. He is the cat. That's who he is. Ooh, they beat Ubukawa. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> that guy looks like the Yu-Gi-Oh main character. Oh, they, we didn't get to see them play against Nekoma. Hopefully this is more than a day trip. Oh yes, they do get to sleep over. Great. 
and they get to hang out with other teams. So fun. If I was in high school, I would have loved that. <laughs> ah, so fitting that the tiger goes to a school with the cat mascot. He's a late bloomer. Yeah, because the coach just forced it to happen, just gave him a bunch of time until they figured it out. It's a good coach. That's funny, the coach is making it personally Kenma's responsibility to find a way to make Lev hit. And just letting Lev do whatever. <laughs> ah, so they should send every free ball and try to serve short to make Lev pass the first ball. Is that Kenma? Is that Nikoma's team, I mean? Maybe they're proud that Kenma is actually coming out of his shell, but that's what Hinata does. He makes everyone come out of their shell. Such a nice guy. Oh, the middles get to meet. <laughs> a Russian greeting. And then Lev's gonna go nuts now. He seems intimidating, but he's actually a really nice guy, like Hinata. Ah. <laughs> uh. Even though I'm not as short as Hinata, I can definitely relate to Hinata's frustration for hearing this comment all the time. You'll see it in my videos. People are always asking, how tall are you? And I'll tell them my height. It's 5 foot 10 in the imperial system and 173 or 174 centimeters in the metric system. Let me double check that. Convert 5 foot 10 inches to centimeters. Okay, good thing I checked. It's 177.8 centimeters. So that's how tall I am for the international fans. Even now, when I meet new volleyball players at tournaments or leagues, and when they walk up to me and they say, oh, what position do you play, libero? Like, no, fool, I'm an outside hitter. The worst is when I play with new teams and setters who've never seen me play, they usually don't set me because I'm short and they don't think that I can be an effective hitter. So that's why I personally only play with setters who have seen me hit because they know my ability to terminate and get kills. I will admit I'm not the best blocker and being short is a big contributing factor to that, but I'm working on it because I know of a few very good short blockers, so I know it's possible. Hinata, I feel your pain. <laughs> that looks like a maniac. Yeah, then right away you acknowledge his hops. Still not impressed. Oh! It's like, take this! <laughs> oh man, this is such a funny scene. <laughs> He's like... Oh, hit his head on the doorway. Ah, oh, he's already announcing himself as the ace. He's too young and inexperienced, he hasn't proven himself yet. Yeah, you can still be an ace as a middle, but... I don't think Lev is anywhere near that point yet. Not consistent enough, and he has to be dominant in multiple aspects. 
Uh, so this is where it's a little cocky. It's different than Ushiwaka. Ushiwaka has been able to demonstrate the things he says. Lev has not yet. Uh oh, hopefully Hinata doesn't get distracted and stop enjoying being the decoy. Oh yeah, the back quick. Mm, the coach sees their potential. Yeah, he sees their hunger. This is a very insightful thing to put in the anime. And this is not something that I think a typical... This is not something that I think the average volleyball player or even the average volleyball coach would understand how in-depth and insightful this comment is. What he's saying is that Karasuno looks extra motivated and calm and hardworking and energetic because they are motivated by their most recent loss. But is that enough to make you better? This goes back to what I said in a previous video where motivation is a myth. And what I mean by that is that not that motivation is not important. Oftentimes we can be very reactive with our decisions and our own motivation. Right now, they had a tough loss, so they feel extra motivated to work hard. But what happens if they're doing well? And that was the case in the beginning of the season. Are they going to continue to be motivated to just be better for the sake of being better? Or are they only motivated because they lost a the game? And that is what separates the great teams from the good teams. Great teams are always finding ways to get better whether they win or lose because they are motivated by that intrinsic desire to be the best version of themselves. Good teams are just reacting to different situations. Maybe I played great, so I'm going to feel good. Maybe we lost this game, so I don't want to feel that way again, so I'm going to play better next time. We'll see if Karasuno continues in this path of wanting to be better, even after they get the revenge on Seijo. <laughs> Your weird quick attack. No, use this as an example or opportunity to learn how to change the direction, Hinata. Because there are going to be t some teams that will just keep up with your speed. Oh, is he going to run a slide to attack? Man, he got super high. Man, they're already working on back quicks. Ah, at least Lev is respectful. <laughs> yeah, you gotta call it before the play. Oh, now Hinata is not the only one that can adapt. Senta. Ace. Ah, they are also trying to figure out how to respond to their loss in the tournament. I wonder what he means by that. Want more stability to achieve more power? Or evolution? Okay. Here are my immediate thoughts to episode 4. I first want to react to that last scene where the coach of Nikoma was saying, are they going to be satisfied with where they're at? Or are they going to continue to evolve and push themselves to be the best they can be? That is called the growth mindset. I hosted an interview on my YouTube show called The Dig with one of the best high school coaches in the nation, Brett Almazen. And he's won multiple state championships and several times his team was ranked number one in the nation which is pretty crazy and one thing he's big on is called the growth mindset where regardless of how they did 
they are always talking about how can we be better. A lot of times, coaches will win bunches of titles, championships, or games because they have a generation of players that are really good together. And then once that generation graduates, they end up being really bad or just mediocre. But one thing that MIDI has been able to do is that every year, no matter how talented a generation of athletes are, once they've moved on, somehow they're able to maintain that success with other generations of athletes with arguably less athletic groups of kids, but because they have that growth mindset. So it's a combination of acknowledging the progress and accomplishments that you've made, but immediately moving on to the next step and thinking of ways you can improve your weak areas. A lot of times teams will only focus on amplifying their strengths. And here we see Karasuno doing a little bit of that. Just because something is working doesn't mean you shouldn't improve it. So the quick attacks with Hinata is working, but we've already seen from the previous tournament that there will be teams that will be able to adapt to it over time, specifically Seijo. What are you going to do then? You don't want to wait for those difficult moments to start making changes because then you're not going to feel confident in the changes that are necessary to beat those teams. So like I said earlier, Nata needs to learn how to change direction because when a middle is able to keep up with him and block him straight ahead, he needs to be able to tool, tip, or hit around the blocker to vary the attack. It was cool to finally see Lev, especially watching him four episodes ago from the OVA episode number one, and to see how much he's already evolved. And a lot of it goes back to his mindset. He is almost too confident but as a coach, I would much rather deal with someone who is overly confident than underconfident. It's like sculpting. It's much easier to create a great sculpture when you have a lot of clay to work with than a little clay to work with. And yes, Lev is tall and he can jump high, but the key to his ability to improve so quickly is his self-belief. Whether or not it has happened yet, he just believes he can do it. And that's why having self-belief and confidence is so hard to develop because you're essentially trusting something that hasn't happened yet. I believe I can get a kill even though it hasn't happened yet. And that's really what confidence is, is believing in your ability to a point where things that haven't happened yet, you already know you can get done. The second half of confidence is even if it doesn't happen out exactly as you planned, that doesn't affect your belief in the next play and the next opportunity you get. Oftentimes, athletes will have false confidence where they only believe in themselves when something good happened. And so that is very reactive to what just happened versus basing your emotions and mindset and expectations on what will happen. One thing I love about Hinata's reaction to Lev being this imposing cocky figure in that nighttime scene in the hallway is how Hinata feels even more confident and more determined when he meets a greater challenge. And that's something that we can all carry with us and learn from Hinata. Whenever you are confronted with a great challenge, like a really skilled team or a very skilled player that you're about to play or any challenge in life, you have three responses. You can either get intimidated and give half-ass effort. You can give up or you can view it as an opportunity to make you better. One question to always practice asking yourself is don't ask if you can do something, always ask how you can do something. And I'll leave you guys with that thought. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next episode.